The following TV2KSU newscast is brought to you by Kent State Summer Sessions. Achieve balance this summer with Summer Sessions at Kent State University. For more information, visit kent.edu slash summer. This is your news on TV2KSU. We have breaking news at this hour. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jeanette Reyes. And I'm Mike Holden. You just saw a life flight helicopter landing in the Roosevelt High School parking lot only moments ago. Police are still on the scene of a severe car crash near the school that required the life flight and a significant amount of emergency personnel. Correspondent Nicole Sipteric joins us live in the newsroom with the story. Nicole, what happened? Jeanette, witnesses say at least three people were involved in the crash, and one female was ejected from the car. She was transported to the high school where she was then life flighted. Witnesses say they believe the excessive speed down Riverbend Boulevard, just off of State Route 43, caused the car to roll over four times. I was on my kayak on the Cuyahoga River heading uh, south, and I heard a noise and I saw some dust flying, which might have been the uh, airbag dust. And I got out and came up and then that's when I saw the car uh, probably about 75 80 feet away from where the young lady was it looked like it hit a tree and stopped at that point uh, the police and the fire started to arrive and there was another fellow here who was running back and forth I had seen him running back and forth when I was coming down the river and uh, I gave him the, my life jacket to put under the young girl's head because her head was facing downward towards the river then the police and fire got here and then they removed the other two people from the car. They were stuck in the car. And then uh, the ambulances took them all away. Officers were unavailable for comment. No deaths have been reported and no names have yet been released. Log on to catwire.com for continuing updates. For TV2 News, I'm Nicole Sipteric. Executive Director of Governmental Affairs Evan Gildenblatt wrote an open letter to Kent State's students. The subject, not surprisingly, was the credit hour tuition increase. The letter says, quote, I will do everything in my power to work proactively with you, the Board of Trustees, and the state government to make sure that you obtain the quality education you deserve at an affordable cost. And for continuing updates on these and other local stories, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at TV2KSU. And get up to the minute news at KentWired.com. A reunion ball will take place Saturday from 8 to 10 p.m. in the Student Center Ballroom, including a keynote speaker and music from every decade of the club's existence. The club, formerly known as the Kent Gay Liberation Front, will honor present and past efforts of its members. The School of Theater and Dance and the Row Green Visiting Director series presents Nathan the Wise. The show, directed by Amy Dayan, tells the story of a Jewish, of Jewish merchant, Nathan, and his quest for religious tolerance. Student tickets are $8, and the show runs until April 22nd in Wright Curtis Theater. Good evening, Kent. Well, it's been a beautiful day so far, and it looks to continue that way through the evening. Across the state right now, we have 72 in Cleveland, 64 in Canton, 67 in Youngstown. Man, is it a relief to say that averages have been high 60s to low 70s. What a nice change. Currently in Kent, we have 65 degrees, mostly cloudy skies throughout the day, but looks like it's dispersing through the evening. Feels just a little bit cooler. Wind coming out of the southwest, about 4 miles an hour. Feels a little closer to 63. Across the nation, we can see we have a little bit of precipitation in the Midwest, but as we take a look a little closer to home, we can see things are pretty clear. Looks to remain the same through this evening. Should be great weather for flash, cast, for flash fest. Excuse me. Be sure to stay tuned later on. We're going to let you know what you have to look forward to this weekend and, of course, your full seven-day forecast. That's later on in the broadcast. For now, back to the desk. Live from TV2 Studios at Kent State University, it's The Agenda with Casey Braun. Who's a good boy? Who's a good Welcome to the season premiere of The Agenda. If you were expecting a KSU basketball game replay, you must really hate yourself. Let's do this, bitch. Kent State recently held a VIP party for all returning freshmen. God, why? 
the party celebrated the completion of what many consider to be the most difficult semester in college. Most difficult? False. My first semester was a piece of cake. When you whiny sons of bitches get past college writing one and seven ideas that shook the universe, then and only then may you come crying. Just listen to these classes that you have to deal with as a junior, okay, when you get down to the real nitty gritty, all right? Photoshop one, fairy tales, wines of Northeast Ohio, human sexuality. Okay, you know what? It, it, it looks harder on paper, okay? That's what she said. Popular soup restaurant Zoop Works is looking to change its name. Here are some suggestions just off the top of my head. Uh, Poop Works, Butt Soup, Pee Pee Doo Doo Fun Fun House, Whoop Zerks, Penis Land. Okay, so they're not that clever, but come on. Any, anything's better than Zoop Works. It's, it's stupid. Kent State is still in search for a new provost after Bob Frank decided to leave Kent State and take the missionary position of president at the University of New Mexico. This leaves the position of provost and senior vice president of academic affairs open for... That's right, Casey. You're at Kent State. Are you doing? I'm getting ready to start the magnificent fanfare of who wants to be a provost. Is that, is that a real thing? Let's get this show started. We really doing this? Dylan, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks. How are you feeling? Uh, a little bit nervous, but yeah. feeling pretty good. All right, now before we begin, let's take a look at some of the questions contestants have had to answer so far. How do you spell Kent? Is it K-E-N-T? C-E-N-T? K-E-N apostrophe T? Or A-K-R-O-N? K-E-N-T. Correct! In what city is Kent State University located? I believe it's Kent. Yes! <laughs> what is Kent State University's official mascot? The Golden Flash? You are correct! Yeah! All right, Dylan, are you ready to continue? I think so. I think I am. All right, let's play. Who wants to be a provost? Dylan, your second to last question. Of the following celebrities, who attended but did not graduate from Kent State University? Was it A, Drew Carey, B, Michael Keaton, C, Joe Walsh, or D, David Sedaris? I'm gonna take a risk here and say that it's a trick question and none of them graduated from Kent State University. You are correct! All right. Dylan, your final question. It's time to determine if you are ready to be Kent State University's next provost. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Dylan, what is a provost? Wait, don't I get any options? Uh, no, not this time. Well, that's, that's just, that's fair, I guess. Um, Ten seconds, Dylan. I believe it is... Seven a, seconds. System of pulleys, maybe. Five, no options on the last. four, three, it's, it's, um, two, it's a, one. It's... I'm sorry, Dylan. So, what was the answer? Uh, we don't tell you that. Oh. Shocking. Well, I'm sorry, Dylan, Shocking. but it looks like you will not be Kent State right. University's yep. next provost. The security will escort you yep. out of the building. No, I don't... Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for tonight. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Quinn's Shoehorns. Slip it in with a Quinn. Back to you, Casey. Well, I, I guess we won't be having a new provost for a while, but I, uh, I wonder what a provost really is. Disney Park employees can now participate in Octobeard after 60 years of clean-shaven cast members. A mouse is finally letting them sport beards and goatees. Ha <laughs> ha! The seven dwarfs can be free from scrutiny. But I still don't understand one little thing. Why has Disney had such a stick up its ass about a freaking soul patch when it lets trampy little whores like Vanessa Ann Hudgens grace the Disney Channel? Mm-hmm. No one has forgotten about those leaked naked pictures. No one. I know I sure haven't. That's right. 
I've switched the safe search off on Google a time or two. I am not ashamed. Priorities, Disney. Priorities. The following is an exclusive presentation of TV2KSU. From the Franklin Hall High Definition Studios, this is Election 2011 on TV2KSU, Portage County's source for politics. Good evening and welcome to TV2's Election 2011. I'm Nathan Edwards. And I'm Rich Pierce. Tonight we'll be giving you in-depth coverage of all of Portage County's races and issues. Well, Ohio has three issues on the ballot this year. Issue two is the most controversial as it calls for the approval or rejection of the Ohio Collective Bargaining Limit repeal, also known as Senate Bill 5. Issue three, dealing with President Obama's health care plan, is another hotly contested item. We have several mayoral races to focus on, as well as school levies and several Portage County towns. But we begin tonight with issue two. A yes vote for issue two will keep Senate Bill 5, and a no vote will eliminate the bill. The controversial Senate Bill 5 was passed back in March, and the main selling point is that it limits collective bargaining rights for public employees. Proponents say the bill will save the state as much as a billion dollars. However, teachers and police officers are strongly against the bill, saying they need their collective bargaining rights. Issue 2 has been in the news almost every day leading up to the election. Tonight, voters will decide on the fate of this controversial issue. Issue 2 is full of controversy and has made Ohio the center of attention this election season. Uh, we're getting closer to a major vote on workers' safety and collective bargaining in Ohio. Issue 2 where the big issue on the ballot is a referendum known as Issue 2. A governor of the past has stood against it on national media. The Kasich administration and the Republican leadership here in Ohio is trying to focus on these public employees and making them uh, the villains. While the current governor has taken every chance to promote it. So let me tell you this. Do you know that your average city worker pays 6% of their health care costs? The average private sector worker pays 23%. So if you're in the private sector, you pay for your own health care and you pay for somebody else's. That's not right. One elderly woman has become this election's Joe the Plumber. But the organization behind Issue 2 stole my words to make it seem like I support Issue 2. I don't. And our public employees have become local stars in TV advertising. This Tuesday, voters will decide the fate of the issue. It began as Senate Bill 5 and was aimed to limit collective bargaining rights for public employees. Quickly, the opposition to the bill rose and the State House issue was made public. Voters in favor of the issue believe... By voting yes on issue 2, we'll improve our economy and our kids can find work and success here in Ohio. Because if we don't offer our children a future here, they'll have to make their future somewhere else. Give them a better Ohio. Vote yes on issue two. But voters against the issue believe. Issue two. issue two would make it harder for our everyday heroes to protect and serve our communities. Issue two puts us all at risk. On Tuesday, November 8th, vote no on issue two. Most recent polls indicate that voters support the repeal of the bill, 57% to 32%. Governor Kasich is prepared to face the music if his controversial move does not pass. This is something that we were trying to give tools to local governments to manage their costs. So if issue two doesn't pass, we don't have to go back and cut money out of the budget. We're actually, you know, we have a rainy day fund now. Now, we also don't have money to just send the local governments and bail them out. They're going to they're going to have to um, figure out, if, if they don't like this, they better figure out what they do want, and we'll work with them. We'll listen to them, see what they have to say. The issue has created a circus of debates in Ohio. And after the votes have been counted Tuesday night, public employees will know their fate. You might notice today on Facebook that many people are using the site to send a message to fellow voters by changing their profile picture to their stance on the issue. Issue 2 is causing quite a stir across Ohio, and the divided views can be seen on many college campuses. TV2 KSU reporter Jessica Schmidt joins us now with the Kent State professor to discuss the issue. Jessica.